All right. Okay. We are going to do a live chat. I know I kind of um, sporadically threw this one out there. So uh, let me let there. Uh, all right. Make sure the camera work is good. And I will give everybody some time to join because I said about five minutes uh, before I was going to start. So I'll let everybody go ahead and get a chance to join. I so swiftly get prompted and booted out. One second. All right. That's... Guys, I don't know if my connection is that great. Um, I might have to do some reverse here real quick. Get a little closer to my house. Driving with the source. Driving with the source. Don't do this at home, kids. <laughs> don't do this at home, children. All right. All right. Don't do this at home. All right, all right, let's see here. Don't do this at home, kids. What up? What up? What up, everybody? All right, I mean, it's a little too much sunlight on me, but I'll do it. Let me try to move this baby over here. Ah, oh, it's better. There we go. Okay. All right, so maybe we can get, um, we can get, um, a better connection right here. Um, basically right next to my uh, house that I'm moving out of, so I'm not able to obviously, you know, get everything out of there that I want. Guys, before we get started, if you guys don't mind, go ahead and share this out. I uh, would like to get as many people as possible. Maybe get some, you know, uh, some good baseball dialogue uh, today. That would be nice. Um, if you guys notice, I kind of took a little bit of time away from Twitter, not on it. There was that point where I was just on it every second, and sometimes you got to, you know, dial it back a little bit. So I was able to do that. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and share this out. One second, guys. I'm going to step away for a second and just share this out on Twitter. All right, cool. Okay, we got about a couple more minutes until it is 6.30 when I said I will start the chat. And I will jump right into it, whatever, whoever is in here. Let's go ahead and do that. I will get to answering those questions and I'm sure more will join as we start. There will be no baseball, Blake says. Um, I hope that's not the case. I really hope that um, we will see baseball. I think we all want to see baseball. Um, it, it would definitely suck if we don't. Um, I also, I also don't really, I don't really see it where there won't be baseball. I think there will be. Um, probably not at this point to our satisfactory, so to say, to our satisfaction, I should say. Uh, I don't think we're going to see a very long season, maybe half of the regular year, maybe even shorter than that. There got to be an agreement, that's all. I mean, players want their money, I get it. Owners already know they're going to lose money, I get it. But there got to be some sort of compromise where we're having a game. Uh, DJ Steele's my friend. How you doing, buddy? Um, he says, you see a 48-game season? I still think and I still hope it's going to be more than that. A 48-game season wouldn't shock me. I, I really wouldn't be um, overly shocked by that. I hope that's not the case. But uh, uh, that wouldn't be the most shocking thing in the world for me. So we'll, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how that goes. How you doing? Welcome. Anthony, welcome, my friend. Everybody, welcome who is joining. Thank you for joining. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make up a tournament name instead of World Series. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess. I mean, I, I've talked to uh, many people about the, uh, the scene beginning and how they're going to do it. And one of the main responses you hear from fans is, is the MVP award, Cy Young, Rookie of the Years, if they have that, the World Series, is it going to be as meaningful? I mean, I, I guess I, I guess that's how everybody feels. Is it going to be meaningful enough? Are, are players and fans going to take it serious? I mean, I think that's a good question. Daniel says, Fook the owners, they'll do nothing. <laughs> as uh, Conor McGregor has retired for the 476th time. So um, I don't know, man. It, it's interesting. Um, I, I guess we'll have to see. Um, 
I don't I don't know how anybody will be satisfied with a half-assed World Series or just baseball in general, a baseball season. I don't think everybody anybody's gonna really like it. So, you know, depending on on, on um who you wanna, you know, put blame to, whether it's the owners or whether it's the baseball players when it comes to salaries and whatnot, I, I guess you just let that go. And and, and at this point. We just got to take what we're going to get. Now, it's up to you to take it seriously. It's up to the players and everybody else. But it will be hard to take it like it's a legit, real, regular season. I think that's fair to say. I see, let's see, let's get to some more of these questions here. Um, I see 48 games with opponents being nothing but division teams, no interleague play, and no East versus West versus Central uh, DJ Steels, I can certainly see that. I can see why that would make sense. Um, and yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me at all if I see uh, TD, see Major League Baseball do something like that. That could actually make sense based on you know everything we're hearing right now. Uh, what about this idea? 120 games, player salaries cut in half, and the spread from 2020-2021 owners get three years of expanded playoffs. With the option of a fourth, ah, that is a bit much. That that's a bit much. Um, the main problem here is the pay. The players don't seem like they really want to take a cut at all, and I can understand it. It wasn't their fault, but hey, hey, look, it wasn't the owner's fault either. So this wasn't um anywhere you could point blame on anybody. This really was nobody's fault. So nobody wanted this to happen. We know spring training was underway. We know all that. We saw all that. We saw games, but. The season canceled, it was delayed, you know, and now we are where we are of trying to kind of get things back to normal. We know the NBA is not doing basketball like they were doing it normally, so that's going to be different. And Major League Baseball, whenever they do it, it's going to be different, simple as that. And I think players are going to have to take some sort of salary cut. I, I really believe that. To look on the bright side, though, Yankees will be truly healthy going into the season. We would have had to play without Judge Paxson if no pandemic. Well, I think if we could get rid of the pandemic, we'd all be okay with that. <laughs> no, but um, I, I get where you're coming from. We still don't know about Judge. It looks like Paxton will be healthy. Uh, it looks like Stanton's healthy, per my understanding. So, yeah, we are getting some of those guys back, so that is definitely good for when the season actually begins. The Yankees should be very healthy. And um, maybe we'll finally get to see Garrett Cole pitch. That would be nice also. Um, I was supposed to see him opening day. I'm still upset about that. Every lockdown should be over and stadium should be near full. If a lot of these protesters don't test positive, well, I mean, I don't think protesting is going to be ending in the next, you know, week or this week at least. I think it's obviously slowing down. It's got a lot more peaceful, which is knock on, on wood. Thank God. That's the way protesting should be. It should always be peaceful, not destroying, you know, private, public and personal property. But um, thankfully, it's gotten peaceful, um, which is great. And yeah, I guess we'll end up seeing numbers from that at some point if cases go up. I don't know. Um, but when I go out and, and I go around in Richmond here where we've had protesting, um, you see less and less mask now. Like people are kind of like, ah, you know, I'm kind of done with this. Um, it's very hard to have people cooped up and change their entire way of life being human beings who are used to going outside, are used to spending money, are used to taking their families out to eat, are used to their children having, you know, after afternoon activities. It's hard to kind of cancel that lifestyle when it's all you've ever known, no matter where you come from. Humans are used to being out in public and are used to talking to one another and, and interacting with people and, you know, uh, feeling emotion and things of that nature. And when you're kind of stuck in your house all day, that kind of goes out the window. So I know Texas, I believe, I don't know about Florida yet, but I think Texas right now is the only state who has said they will allow up to, I believe, 50% capacity. So I, I know they've said that. So I don't know if that's more than just Texas. 
but they are doing uh, uh, allowing fans back in their uh, professional sports environments. So uh, that'll be interesting in the stadium, see how that goes. At this point, I just want to see baseball. I don't care if it's a short season. You know, Anthony, I, Anthony, I, I agree with you, man. Um, I think at this point, the majority of fans kind of feel that same way. Is that we do just want to see baseball come back. We do just want to see um, some sort of normal. And I think sports play a really big factor in the way that... Um, in the way that we all, you know, see life. I, I think it, it, it plays a major factor in the way that all of us go about our life. I think I think sports is a really big part of the way of the way we live and the way we go about our business. So I think that is very, very important. I think it's very important. Governor of VA is about to have it to fifty percent for restaurants and places. Um I, I don't I, I don't know. It's like they change often, so I really don't know. Um, but if you're saying that, I, I have no reason not to believe it. I think that would be good. I, I think there's already restaurants um, in certain areas that have already said, oh, for an example, I was out, uh, what was it, Friday night? Friday night, I was out most of the night. Um, and the place I was at, they had the outdoors, and then they had it kind of sectioned off, and then they also had the inside where you kind of got plastic plates, plastic cups, shots out of, you know, your, your regular plastic cups, which is kind of weird. But um, it was definitely a difference. Plates were a little smaller. So they kind of had it where no food could be shareable in a sense. So, yeah, I, I think you'll start seeing a lot more things open up. Uh, one second, guys. Give me a second. Um... For me, things in my personal life in college is very stressful, and sports for me is a healthy and legal escape to forget uh, what's going on around me for a couple of hours. Yeah, I mean, I I think um, I think sports in general is a uh, a very good escape for everybody. You know, there's a lot of people in this world that suffer that suffer with um, you know uh, 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 mental uh, uh, mental disease and mental disorders. And I, I do think there's there's a you know there's a lot of depression out there and things of that nature and you're cooped up in your house. Sometimes you know what you feel goes escalates a little bit. And yeah, you're right, man. Baseball and, and sports conversation and sports topics, as much as we think it could be toxic, politics is a lot more toxic. You know, um so Having sports back would definitely be a welcome, I think, for everybody. I think everybody wants to see sports back. You got a lot of people now who have nothing else to do, and it's a lot of people's first times ever discussing politics or voicing their opinions. And, you know, you got mixtures of newcomers, people that talked about politics for years, and it kind of crashes head on, and you got people who want to teach each other. You got people who don't want to hear it. You got people who listen to one side, people who listen to another side, and they don't want to hear any opinions. So it, it does get um, it does get toxic, no doubt about it. No sports and isolation equals depression. This entire year is trash. New York captain, I mean, I think I think we could all agree on that. Sal, my friend Sal. Let me see what Sally boy got to say. Sal says, hey, Pete, is there an increase in cases from the protest or a second phase like they predict? Do you think they shut it all down again? Well, I guess I could only go off of the words of what the president has said. Um, he has said he will not shut the economy down again if it ever came back, so I, I hope not. I think we all wish that it doesn't come back, but we could be hopeful. I don't think there's been any reports about um, increases in, te in, in, in uh, cases when it comes to protesting. Haven't seen anything like that, so I don't know. Um, so I have no real way of judging that. I think you will have a lot of people very hesitant now about shutting their businesses down after what we've already seen. And again, I guess we got to see what happens. Happens with the test. I guess we got to see if there are increase in cases. If there's a percentage number that comes in out by um, the end of the year, 
So that will only help. And I know there's a lot, a lot of people who are uh, very big into the idea of vaccines and things of that nature. So I guess we'll just see. I mean, really, this is something that we never experienced before. You know, um, 1917, again, Spanish flu is the last thing that really hit the world the way this is. So it's brand new. It's not some, you know, thing that we've experienced before, just didn't handle well. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it comes back. We'll see how it reacts. We'll see if there's a vaccine out there that, that something happens. Do you think Connor is really retiring? No, I don't. To me, logically, it would make sense that the number of cases increases. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it would too. Should the Yankees trade and Horn prospects haul for Lindor to secure the World Series next year? Well, again, folks, I'll go back to my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful saying. I hate people. Not hate people. I'm sorry. My God. Um, I hate when people say over the top or will guarantee a World Series. Nothing guarantees a World Series. Put us in a better position to win. I do think the Yankees would be interested in, in Francisco Lindor. Who the hell wouldn't be? So I, I could definitely see the Yankees being interested in him. You know, Andujar missing some of this year again. Maybe now he comes back and you get him somewhere in this lineup guaranteed because you want his bat in there. It's strange. I mean, this whole season is strange. A lot can change on a roster now, even a start a year. So um, there's a lot of questions that are going to have to be answered. It's very weird. Sal says if 2020 were a person, it would be Angel Hernandez. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't think anybody disagrees with that one, Sal. <laughs> I don't think anyone agree disagrees with that one. Do you think Judge broke up with his girlfriend because of her DUI? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. Aaron Judge is a grown boy. He could do what he wants. He could do what he wants. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I could kind of see, you know, Aaron Judge not wanting something like that, especially, you know, him, him, him being, you know, very not controversial at all. Um, with anything he does, he's basically the face of baseball. You know, you got your him and your Trout. Uh, most people believe he's the number one selling jersey. I think every year, isn't he? That he that he's that he's kind of been a regular now. So yeah, I don't think Aaron Judge wants anything negative um, showing and shining towards him right now. No doubt about it. Do the Yankees will still go after Chris Bryant? They could. It's you know I, I I still get a lot of these questions in in like in DMs and stuff like that about you know potential moves the Yankees could make. This whole thing throws a lot of things off. Excuse me, guys. Woo! Woo! Okay. Yeah, this whole thing throws a lot of things off because, you know, at the end of the day, the owners are going to be losing money. And, you know, I hear a lot of people say, oh, well, they got enough. They're fine. Yeah, they're, they're, they're probably going to live better than all of us. No doubt about it. But let's also remember... You don't buy a team to lose money. They they still buy a team. It is still a business. They still want to make money. So I I don't want to sit here and look like the Yankees this offseason are going to look to add a lot of salary. I don't think many teams are going to. I think a lot of free agents are going to somewhat be screwed a little bit. Um, when it comes to the type of contracts they may see. So that's going to be really interesting. Oh, man, Siciliano, NYY. Yeah, man, I get you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Alice Rodriguez and Derek Jeter response to the Black Lives Matter protest? Um, am I wrong to say I, I don't really remember reading it? Um, To be honest, if it was recent, I probably didn't pay attention to it or see it. I uh, haven't been on Twitter as much the last couple of days, and I really don't watch television at all. Um, I've been so focused on moving, so I probably didn't have a chance to read it or pay attention to it. Matter of fact, I think I did see A-Rods, and I think he marched also. Um, God bless him, you know? Um, God bless him. At the end of the day, it would be, even if you had a different opinion of it, it would be very hard as somebody with a lot of spotlight to go against it in any way. Just because, you know, there's a mob mentality out there that if you have a different opinion, you're supposed to be canceled. So uh, I think you're going to hear a lot of the same responses. And a lot of the same responses are probably fairly accurate. You know, it's kind of the way it should be. Um, 
I, I, I like to see the good results. I like to see the support. Everybody's against racism. Everybody is against racism. I don't think you'll have um, anybody come out and say that you know they're for it. My God, if you're if you're for racism, you're 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 just you're just in the wrong. I hate saying it, but you're just in the wrong time. It's stupid. Um, it's just a disgusting thing. I mean, no matter how you want to look at statistics, no matter how you look at police brutality, no matter how you look at any political spectrum. Uh, people that are truly racist are disgusting. And I mean, that's any any person. Um, it's a disgusting thing uh, to hate somebody because of how they look, skin color. Any any discrimination is disgusting. You know, so a lot of people face it. You know, so it, it, it's certainly something that I don't think anybody gets behind. I don't think anybody should ever support. It's terrible. So it, it's very hard, I would say, to put out a negative statement. Um, unless you try, <laughs> I, I would say. Uh, yeah, I think you might have to try on that one. That's probably not a good idea. Um, what do you think about Tyson and A-Rod trying to make another run? I didn't see anything about A-Rod making a run. I know about Mike Tyson doing it. Um, I like the idea of Tyson doing exhibitions and stuff like that. Um, I don't. I didn't hear anything about A-Rod. I, I didn't know about that, if that is actually accurate. I didn't hear about that at all. Um, is that accurate? Is Alex Rodriguez looking to make a comeback? I didn't, I didn't see anything like that. I know Mike Tyson is. Um, apparently his fight is going to be announced at some point here soon. I haven't heard nothing about Alex Rodriguez looking to do that. Um, will the Yankees try to get Rockies third baseman in the trade, Nolan Arenado? I could see him doing it. Will they take on that contract? I don't know. That, that, that's some big money to take on right now. This is going to be a tough time for everybody. Teams are going to lose money. Owners are going to lose money. It's simple as that. So um, it's either you cancel the year, lose a ton, or you get something back and, and, and try it again. Oh, okay. A-Rod is taking a second run at trying to buy the Mets. So good, good luck to him. I mean, he should own a team. Alex Rodriguez is a good one to own, to own a ball club. Um, because he is a smart, genius baseball mind. Um, I guess ownership might be different. I don't know. He's he's apparently a very good businessman too. So yeah, let um let Alex do what Alex wants to do. I mean, he's not going to be able to buy him himself. So it'll be interesting to see who joins him. That'll be I know J Lo probably will, but it'll be interesting to see who else joins. And it'll be great notoriety for the Mets, put it that way. I rewatched the Tyson versus Douglas upset. Buster Douglas got knocked out in the in round four. He stood up in ten seconds. Bad refing. Well, yeah, no nobody believes that, you know, Mike Tyson was just gonna kill that fight. He ran out of gas and, and got beat up. You know, got the got a big punch land on him and was shook and was rocked. And in heavyweight fighting, anybody could do that to anybody. I don't care how much superior you are. You let a man that's 220, you know, 219, 215, 225, nowadays 250, 275. You let one of those guys hit you with with a proper shot and and, and most of us are going to fall. So, um, yeah, I mean, Tyson's career is unbelievable, you know. If you never really studied Mike Tyson or watched while he was under custom auto, I mean... My God, a, a lot of people talk about the losses, the tragedies, the bad things he'd done. When I just look at Mike Tyson as the fighter, arguably one of the greatest of all time, if not the greatest of all time, that you could argue so many different ways. Um, just absolutely terrific fighter. At 14 years old, the guy was terrifying at 14. So if you watch his sparring footage at 14, just, just really scary, really scary. Um, were there any notable players the Yankees cut as a result? Um, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Tyson will fight professionally again. Uh, the hunger is back. The problem was never the skill. That's right. The problem was up here for Mike Tyson. And, um, a guy like Customato was able to keep him medicated, uh, keep his mind sharp, have him focused on things he needed to do. Um, have him build character, uh, have him, you know, be respectful. And like Mike Tyson says it all the time, man, he was trained to be a, basically be a killer. 
And when that went away, he just became a killer. Simple as that. And there was no other way to um, to live that life. When Cus Tomato passed, it was one of the worst things that could happen to Mike. Um, under Cus Tomato, he was he was amazing. So it's um it's sad. It really is. It, it's it's definitely sad, but he's, he's he's terrific. He's a terrific fighter. Uh, Dream fight Tyson versus Mayweather. I know it would have happened. Yeah, I mean, such a difference in size uh, sizes. I mean, Mayweather would have been able to put his to do his great uh, defense like that against a guy like Tyson. Probably would have broke his shoulder after a while. Oscar De La Hoya says that Tyson will be champ if he trains. Um... I don't know if Tyson could stand in the ring right now with a guy like Tyson Fury, to be fair. Um, it'll be interesting to see what Tyson can do. But a guy like Tyson Fury at this age and this level of his legit prime, the way he moves, even if Mike Tyson is healthy and even if he has endurance again, which he really lacked towards the end of his career, he looks in phenomenal shape. But remember, he's a lot older. So even if he has the ability to go a few rounds... He, he's probably not going to get close to a guy like a Tyson Fury because Fury could, would be able to keep him away and would probably make him tired. He probably wouldn't have to punch him a lot. So later in rounds, Fury would probably beat him up. Tyson Fury is actually underrated, which is pretty surprising to say, but he probably is. PD Baseball, what up? Hope the family is well and safe. Yes, the family is very, very safe. Um, I ensure, uh, 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 living in the state of Virginia, we are well protected, so to say. I should say that. Yes, we are. Um, my family is very well protected. And uh, we will remain that way. But hopefully um, everybody else is, is safe out there and doing well also. But yes, we are uh, well protected. And we are safe. Thank you. If Mike Tyson is the champion at 50 plus years old, is he the GOAT? Yeah, I mean, you you would... If Mike Tyson ever came back, for an example, let's say... Uh, let's say let's say a guy like Mike Tyson is able to come back and a guy like Mike Tyson is able to defeat a top contender. I don't care if it's Tyson Fury. I don't care if it's Dillian White. I, I don't care if it's um, Daniel Dubois. It could be any of these guys. Um, if Mike Tyson is able to beat somebody at that level, that would be unbelievable. I don't know if we'll see that, but uh, even him coming back and beating a Holyfield again, to me, it would be spectacular. So um, it'll be very interesting to see what, uh, what, what Tyson does. That would be extremely interesting. See the protection sometimes? Yeah, let me let me move into my new house and, and yeah, I can I can show you guys quite a bit. <laughs> I will break out the arsenal, yes. Uh he is still a beast. Yes, he is. He is Mike Tyson. He looks he looks terrific by all means. Who is favorite to win the NBA championship? Damn, that's a tough one for me to talk about because I really don't know. I, I don't know much about it. I really don't. Joe Rogan says Tyson is on testosterone replacement, and because of that, he will be able to compete against young men. Yeah, I mean, I could see that too. He's definitely on something. Um, so, a couple of different things. So, so a lot of people don't know this, but um, Mike Tyson actually has his own marijuana now too. And to be fair, a lot of times, um, weed or just CBD alone will act as a, a, a um, uh, in a in a deflammatory measure. So it will help with uh, being swollen. It'll help with muscle joints. Um, I wouldn't say it's a miracle, but I don't know if Mike Tyson was a big smoker back in his day early on. No, he is now. So it does actually affect your training. As you guys know, I'm actually a, a fairly big CBD smoker. Um, so I believe in it. I know it. A lot of times when I do weight training or I do my sessions in boxing myself, yeah, it it, it um it definitely helps. Um, so I don't know much about just weed in general, but uh, but uh, CBD does wonders for me. I love it. It's it's terrific. Um, it doesn't get you high, so it doesn't do none of that. Um, it does. It has no side effects whatsoever. Uh, so that's something I utilize quite a bit. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, the, the, the Italian in me, it just comes out. 
Um, but yeah, man. So, um, yeah. So, so with Mike Tyson, for an example, he, he looks like he's in the best shape he's ever been. He looks in better shape than he's looked in for a lot of his fighting career, especially not, not as younger, but when he started to make it those late appearances, uh, he looks terrific. He looks great. It's going to be exciting to see him fight again. It's definitely going to be exciting to see him fight again. No doubt about it. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, kneeling in the NFL opinions. Um, I I've always saw both sides of this, and um, it's it's a it's a controversial topic because. I think you have both sides that see it one way and see it in another way who do not want to give in to the other side because, like, it's a sign of weakness or whatever. I, I don't know. Um, protesting is protesting. It, it should always be allowed. I can understand why somebody wouldn't like it. Again, people don't see it. So one side sees it as... We're not protesting the American flag and the American soldiers. We're protesting inequality. Great. That's that's beautiful. That, that should be protested 100%. But then you have another side who says, well, since it's being done during a national anthem, we equate the national anthem with the military, uh, with men and women who died for people to be allowed to do this and, you know, for everything else. And at the end of the day, you know, Colin Kaepernick wore the socks that time with the pig faces on it. He donated money to some certain, well, I forgot what it was again, um, a lady who was involved with terrorism of some sort, something. I don't know. I don't have the facts in front of me right now. But I don't think Colin Kaepernick necessarily meant harm. I, I don't think he meant harm for it. Um, yeah, and I and I agree with that. And and Occupy, that, that's what I'm saying. So I do see, you know, both sides of it. Um, I see both sides. I do. I, I understand one side. I understand the other side. My whole thing is I wish there was a way where... You know, and not to stick up for the president here. He did invite the NFL players that time to come have a discussion about it and figure out a way that they can do it that everybody's happy. I don't know if anybody ever wanted to do that. So, I guess you could leave it at that. But, I wish there was a way where everybody can say, maybe lock arms. I forgot, one of the teams, everybody locked arms. And he still stood. But they still understood that, look, we are also trying to send a message out there about inequality. And that's awesome. That is beautiful. The NFL's majority African-American. So they should have their 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 causes and their wants heard in that atmosphere if they want. Um, and that was always peaceful. That wasn't negative. But I, I do understand why some people may say, well, you know, I come from a military family. We've seen football players even say, I don't like it during that time, but I understand it. So, you know, and a lot of this stuff always comes down to politics. A lot of this stuff always comes down to politics. Um, whether you're on one side or the other side, again, people don't believe me when I say this, but I've always come right down the middle. So I've never been a flat-out Republican. I've never been a flat-out Democrat. I always just try to see it as, you know, what the hell it is, and, and that's it. And if I agree with one opinion, I agree with it. If I agree with another opinion, I agree with it. That's why it's funny, because I get a lot of people DM me and say, hey, I didn't want to say this in public, but I want to ask you what are your thoughts about this. And I go back and forth with them, and it's always a good conversation. It's never bad. And we agree on some things that they would never think they would have agreed with because I just present facts and what I know. Because I don't see it as a left or a right thing. I just see it as an American issue. Um, and maybe not everything could be seen that way, but I like to see everything as what is best for every American. What is best for us as a whole. I don't want to see things left. I don't want to see things right. Now, some people will probably see my Twitter feed and go, well, obviously... You support one side. 
Well, no, because I agree with some of what the left says, and I agree with what some people that are very moderate say. So I can go around many different ways, and that's why I think it's okay to understand that dialogue is key. You got to have conversation. So uh, th there's a lot of people that probably don't notice. So today, the president um, had a conference where he had a lot of law enforcement among them. And I was watching it and I heard the whole thing and I said, that's good. I like that he's saying we got to figure out a way to do this better, but we cannot get rid of our police because that's unfair to everybody. So this idea about defunding or taking money away or putting blame on one side on an entire police force or it's just not going to end well. And the one thing missing from what the president did today is I would have liked to seen something where there's maybe community leaders there also. Where there's leaders from the different viewpoint there. I think that is very productive. And I think you got to see that. I think at some point we have to see something like that happen. Um, that's not bad. So getting the viewpoint of one side, and again, people, it's almost like you can't win if you're the president right now. Um, he probably knows that. So even when he comes out like today, he goes, I acknowledge the problem that we're seeing. It was wrong. It was terrible. Should never happen. I acknowledge that maybe the police need to do something a little different. That's what we're here to discuss today. I would also like to see the other side involved. I would also like to see maybe leaders from these groups that are taking a stand. Be invited. Come to the table. Have a conversation. Look, folks, violence will not fix it. Conversation, dialogue, and agreements will. And community outreach. Community outreach is so key. Community outreach can change a lot more than what we probably even believe. So I think there's a lot of different factors here that can make this problem go away. Or at least just make it better in general. And I hope we can see that more. Manufactured outrage? Uh, I'll say this. Um, if you watch the news, certain news, so I don't like any news media. I don't like Fox News. I don't like CNN. I don't like MSNBC. I don't like none of them. I think they're all... There, there's some, I think, that are a little less biased than others, for an example... I think CNN is just complete anti-Trump. I think MS, MS, MSNBC is complete anti-Trump. And then your late late shows, 5 o'clock and on, 5, 8, 9, 10 on Fox is very, you know, biased towards Trump. And then you'll have your shows early in the morning who I think just don't like them. But if you watch the media, how you would think if you watch CNN all day, how could anybody like the president? I mean, they, they make him sound like he's the most evil man that ever lived. I mean, so I do feel the media is the cause of a lot of this. I do think a lot of it is fuel to the fire, so to say. A lot of words are minced up and diced and thrown out there to sound worse than they actually were. Um, can you point blame one way? No, there's a lot of blame to go around. But, um, yeah, politics is a tricky game. It's a hard game to navigate, especially where we are where we are right now. It, it makes it it makes it very, very difficult. It makes it very, very difficult. Um, so I missed some of you guys. Let's see. Anyone who grew up in New York streets has seen uncalled for police brutality. Um, Occupy, I agree. I mean, I'm there with you. I, I'm, I'm there with you. Um, I always talk about uh, where I grew up because, um, you know, people don't recognize that I lived on, I lived in Castle Hill in New York. I lived near Gun Hill Road. 
Um, I lived, uh, I spent many, many times in Washington Heights, uh, 157 and Broadway. And I've also lived on 170th and Jessup Avenue. In the majority of those areas, I'm the minority uh, than other people. But yes, you do see police abuse power in New York. And I, 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 always, I always try to explain it that when I like to see an issue, I try to see an issue from everybody's point of view. So I want to understand why somebody will be upset. But I'd also want to understand why the other side might see it and be upset by it too. So I know for a fact if I was a cop. So now for me to say, let me put myself as a police officer. Living in New York where there is crime. Where you could be ambushed. Where you have these issues going on. And you know that going into the job. I also have the understanding that me personally, I got a family at home who I want to get to go home and see. I, I want to be go home and see family. But I also understand I swore an oath and I should have been given training on how to handle these type of situations. Some of the things we see that have been um, um, so expanded on when it comes to media uh, uh, coverage have been terrible. I mean, no matter how you want to see it, it's been wrong. Nobody disagreed with that. You know, it's funny because you see the hostility towards certain people when they talk about this. But hell, I've, I've for an example, I've watched the president speak about George Floyd about, what, seven, eight times already. And every single time he says it was horrible and the officer was wrong. Every single time he admits that it was a problem and this should never happen. Um, every time he admits that police and minority communities need to be treated the same way. They, they need to treat anybody they stop, no matter what their race, religion, color, sex is, the same way. And everybody agrees on that, so that's not the problem. And that's what I find so strange, that everybody's making this a different issue, when it shouldn't be that issue. Everybody wants to see change here. I haven't heard many people against change. I think the problem becomes when you get one side and another side who have very strong beliefs, who want to throw different ideas in there that not the majority can agree to. Like defunding. It's insane. It's insanity. You cannot defund an entire police force or make it sound as if that entire police force needs to see blame. You can discuss police reform. You can say we need to have a legit discussion with all these communities and make something work. I, I think that would be the greatest thing you could possibly have. All right, so let me see. Um, Peter, your lifetime has politics ever been this sensitive? No, no way. And and a lot of it has to do with the media. And and Quinn, I, I'm I'm not sitting here defending one side i watch it i watch all of it um man th there would be times i uh, during the election for an example i'll get to everybody's question so thank you guys for asking there would be times i'd be in a gym and and this is before the election of 2016 you know leading up to it i would see the dumbest headlines you would ever see in your life the most idiotic headlines ever cnn donald trump gets Two scoops of ice cream, everybody gets one. And I remember seeing it. I said, this can't, this can't be for real. What is this? There'd be times where there'd be a quote, half of it will be missing, and it will just be there to cause division. And I'm saying, what is this? This is just to cause problems. This is just to get more people angry and upset to go vote. Ask yourself this question. Why does this seem like it always happens right before an election? Is it coincidence? I don't know. Is it weird? Yes. I'll leave it at that. I, I don't know. I'm not saying it's conspiracy theory. I don't know. The Heights banging with the Dominican. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. All the time. Um, It's funny because in the Heights, they think I'm a cop. So I don't really get bothered in the Heights. Um, In the Bronx, it would be different. Bronx, Harlem. Those neighborhoods, yeah, I would get my, 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 you know, I would get called uh, names. I would, you know, get different looks and shit like that. It never bothered me. I mean, so for me, that shit never bothered me. Um, 
I would have cops bother me when I would be in Harlem asking me what am I doing? Um, because, you know, they see it as what the hell are you doing in Harlem? Um, but not that. But, um, yeah, in Washington Heights, I would always... Have you played video games during quarantine? No, I don't really play video games at all. Um, Anna says, I think what the police officers did to George was horrible and disgusting. But to lump them in with the... And that's exactly right. That officer should be prosecuted. He should be put in prison. Simple as that. It was murder. I don't see anybody disagreeing with that at all. It was murder. He should be arrested. He's arrested already. But these charges need to stick. And I think that will happen. I hope it does. Uh, all you have to do is remove qualified immunity so cops can be sued. Hey, that, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Uh, Sal says, someone breaks into your home and um, is in your living room. You can't find your AR-14. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Sal, to answer your question, hopefully it never comes to that. Off topic, Pete, you still living in the car. People want to know. <laughs> Um, no, I am not living in the car. If I was, this is an all right car. Um, it's an upgrade, but no, I am actually moving into a house. So my house is a bit a mess right now with boxes and all that. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, I am not living in, uh, my car right now. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, my husband said defund the unions. Okay. I mean, I guess I could, I could learn more about that and get behind it. In my opinion, perfect storm. Millions out of work. Ahmed Aubrey. A week or two before, uh, the pump was primed for unrest. Charges must stick or the country will explode like 1968. Hundreds, maybe thousands will die. Um, yeah, I, I definitely think charges need a stick. I'm worried about that being the October surprise this year. I'll just throw it out there. Every election cycle, there's an October surprise. Um... I'm pretty sure the DOJ could probably get involved. I don't know how much they can get involved in something like that, but I, I believe these charges should stick. I don't know how they don't. I, I don't know how they don't stick. I, I don't care what it was, but... Uh, every year there's an October surprise, and typically it's not a good one. <laughs> typically you don't hear something great. You don't hear that everybody's back to work. The world is looking amazing. There's an election coming up next month. You don't typically hear that. Um, I don't know. You hear a lot about these mail-in ballots. Would civil unrest cause a reason for mail-in ballots? I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I'll just throw that one out there. I hope not. I hope to God everything is just nice and jolly, but... Uh, We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. We will see. Um, last night, my husband and I got home from work. Two cops stopped us and asked if we were making noise. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. My God. Yeah, only good October surprise is the Obama one. Yep, when I remember that was right before the election. That's right, and yeah, um, I remember. I remember when that did happen. Uh, so I don't think we'll be as fortunate with Trump to see something nice like that happen. <laughs> Even if it were to happen, I don't think the media will report it so nice. So um, you're almost in a lose lose, so to say. Um, I don't know. I, I've just been very, very honest. I, I've been, uh, you know, a lot of my honesty, I think a lot of people uh, just don't like hearing it. I think a lot of people don't like to hear facts. I think a lot of people just want to hear one side and that's it. And it doesn't really work that way, especially when you have when you have legit problems. I pray and I've said this and I'll say it again. I've said it in this chat. What I would want the president to do, and I've been hearing rumors that he's going to have a... Um, He's going to have a press conference that he's going to talk about, you know, social justice and uh, and racial equality in the world and what we're seeing right now. He's going to have a, a, a conference about it. So we'll see if that happens and how that goes. But um, it will be very, very... My hope is 
that he will get people together, to be honest. And, and he gets a group of people together, whether it's, it should be police, it should be police leaders, and I think it should be community leaders. And you get them together for a round table to discuss these ideas, to discuss what can change, to discuss how this can happen. And maybe you get some legislation done. Maybe you really do make a difference. Um, I don't know why that wouldn't happen, to be quite honest. And, and again, I like what Trump has done for the economy and a lot of other things. I, I, I like all that. This is something I think would be amazing for him to do for everybody. You want to try to unite. Will it work? I'll be honest. It probably wouldn't because the media is so it is so um uh um it's so divided on all this stuff. So uh, I don't know if it'll we'll ever be reported fairly, but I do think it would be good. I think it would be really good, and I would hope to see something like that happen. I I really do. I don't understand why Trump isn't offering concrete job recovery plans and concrete plans on more criminal justice reform. Um. When it comes to jobs, I mean, we had the discussion about infrastructure. Infrastructure will bring back a ton of jobs everywhere. So, I mean, that will jobs machine, and I think you will see that coming. I just think where we are right now, could the Democrats give him that win? I don't think they'd want to. Um, and it's sad to believe that we're living in a time where you may not want a win for American people. Because it could hurt one side. I think that's so idiotic. But I think it's also accurate based on what we see. And what we see every single day to the vision we see. Um, but, but, I, um, but I agree with you. I agree with you 100%. I do think that there should be a little more concrete uh, uh, discussions around what he would like to do. Uh, when it comes to what we're seeing right now in our world and what a lot of people um, are concerned about. So I think there should be some sort of criminal justice reform. Um, and I think he should have a, a, a little better idea. And folks, maybe that's what his conference with police is in the next couple of days. We'll see. Political parties have sadly divided the country. You are, you're spot on. I don't think anybody should deny that. I don't think anybody should deny that. Do I have an update on Ellsbury's contract dispute? No, that kind of just disappeared, didn't it? Um, no, I have no update on that at all. Nothing. Nada, nothing at all. Chances of a baseball season? Um, I still think it's high because, you know, God, I'm spitting everywhere. Um, <laughs> I still think it's, when I meet you guys in real life, I don't normally do this. Um, no, I do think it's still high uh, that we'll see a baseball season. Owners got to make some sort of money. I don't think they're ever going to want it where they're not having any games at all. And again, you got places like Texas who are saying we can have fans back in to a degree. I think Florida is going to be doing the same thing. So you have stadiums that are willing to have fans here soon. So we'll see how it goes. Six feet away, man. I'm trying to stay six feet away. But yeah, guys, um, uh, we're living in a, in a key world, you know. Um... A lot of people don't want to hear your opinion. A lot of people, when you have a different opinion, they want to cancel you. And they want to, you know, get you fired from your job. Um, have you lose everything you have. And I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's nice. I think that's um, that becomes uh, very nasty. But um, hopefully things will get better. Hopefully things are looking up. Um, uh, hopefully things will get better. Uh, keep speaking up, Pete. Don't stop. No, I don't know any other way. So yeah, I will. I will always, always speak up for what I believe in, and um, and that is it. Um, no question about it. Um, somebody made a comment to me recently, and he said, "Do you think that it'll be great to have a third political party, like a legit third political party?" And I think maybe, maybe yeah, maybe now is the time to do something like that, or eventually at some point, uh, to have something like that. I like that we don't always agree, Pete, but both love the Yankees. Yeah, I mean, hey, that's that's life. And I've had so many people over the last couple of days that I've proved to them that, um, and Occupy, I'm okay with that too, um, that I've proved to them that, hey, look, even though we don't necessarily agree on everything, we can have a conversation and share ideas. And I think the world needs to get like that. 
folks, look, and I somebody said this to me recently, and um, it was it was very accurate. Somebody said to me, Pete, what if this whole thing breaks up and you got people invading homes and hurting people for no reason because they're upset? And I said, well, look, um, they also asked me about racism. And I said, look, man, here's the way I, I, I see it. If you look in my household, racism doesn't exist. And, and, I, and I say my household for an example is that I have, I got two kids of color. My fiance is Dominican. We got two kids of color. Both of my children are darker than me. I told them racism ends in my house. I never saw it being from New York. I gave a shit to be honest. Um, you are a guy or a woman. In my book, I didn't give a shit what color you are. I didn't care what your religious beliefs were. If we were cool, we were cool. If we weren't, we weren't. And it's funny because I brought up that the other day and I said, look, I'm the man of my house. If that God forbid were ever to happen, I'm going to be the first one to go because I will defend my family before anybody else. Um, so for me, the world needs to understand that, yes, inequality and all this stuff, it does exist. We see it. Is it as bad as people believe? Maybe not. Maybe it is. We don't know. But, but, we also got to realize that you got people every day that are not living racist lives. You got people every day that are supporting people that don't look like them. You got people every day that hire fair. You got people every day that all they want is the goal of every American, live well, continue to prosper, grow, live in a fair society, think that people are good, and be happy that they're able to grow and help their family out. So I do think we have issues, deep-rooted issues. I think public schools are a major problem. I've had hard debates with people about that. I think the public school system is redirected at one side. I think colleges, the majority of teachers are liberal. And I do think you got that is an issue. I do think it's a problem. I do think if you teach kids early on about hatred and only about hatred of certain things and not really focus on how we overcame these issues, which my kids go to school, they tell me what they learn. And at home, I got to teach them how we overcame these things, how we worked as a country that people who lost their lives or who felt these real issues had to overcome it. Talking about the good of America, then they talk about the negative parts of America and not talk about people from the 14th century as terrorists and this and that. Because yes, were they good people? No, but it wasn't only Christopher Columbus because I bring this up because my kid came home to me one day and said, hey, dad, you know, you're Italian and Italians throughout history have loved Christopher Columbus for however you see it. And the schools basically, they kind of just come out and say that Christopher Columbus was an evil, horrible, terrible terrorist that, you know, killed indigenous people and, and all this. Okay, fine. Did we learn what happened to the Mayans? Did we learn what the conquistadors did? Those times were totally different. And I'm not sitting here to say that they were some beautiful times that it's all right, okay? Because anything like that nowadays, would you'd be looked at like a psychopath and we have to kill them. They were all horrible. And it's funny because my kids never heard about uh, Juan Ponce de Leon and Pizarro and and Magellan and Sir Francis Drake and 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 a lot of these explorers that were horrible people. But in their time, it was almost a job. Doesn't mean they were sweethearts. Doesn't mean they were the most evil men on the planet. Times were very different. It's very hard to use a term. That was really created now on somebody from the 14th century. 
So that's where I would hope that there could be almost an understanding um, of, of how things could be. Um, how, and, and, well, Occupy. I, I see this all the time. Occupy the other day. My kids came home and they knew about 9-11. But there wasn't a moment of silence. There wasn't a conversation about it. Um, you know, when 9-11 happened last, uh, 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 September 11th of every year, I remind my kids of what the day was. Schools don't talk about it as much. They don't teach it as much. I'm telling you, one day my son went to school, no joke. I asked him, I said, Jay, what did you do today? What did you learn? He said, nothing. We went to the garden and we painted a rock and called it the kindness rock. That's what he did an entire day of school. Cute. <laughs> Cute. I get it. But I kind of want my kids to go to school to learn. I could teach them the good and the bad at home. Um, let me teach my children to love people. Let me teach my children to know when to speak up. Let me teach my children kindness. Let me teach them uh, respect. Let me do that job. You guys focus on them. Um, so that's just my opinion on that. I'm a true centrist. I would love to see a party that really attracts moderates from both Democrats and Republicans. I agree. I agree. I I couldn't agree with that anymore. And I think me personally am a living embodiment of that. Um, I believe the greatest way you can make change in every community is by prosperity, is, is economic growth. I, I really believe that. I think the most majority of Americans, black, white, Asian, I don't care what growth and economic potential. I think everybody treated fairly and work myself up to be something in life, support a family, put them in a good community and live life. Go to the restaurant every now and then. Go to the movie, see what every, the majority of people want. And I think that does start with economic growth. I believe that. Um, being Again, being from New York, for an example, a lot of my friends live in the same neighborhood, never moved, been there for 30 years, complained for 15 years of it, but they don't, they don't know what change is at this point, and they're stuck in that mindset that, oh, well, nothing will change. But I don't know if that's a good thing. Did you know what Luis Severino... That, Luis Severino's wife is going to have a child sometime soon. I had no idea. <laughs> you. I love you, DJ Steels. I love you, DJ Steels. What kind of season do you think we will be looking at? 50 games, 112? I actually think you're going to see more of an 80-plus game. I think we end up with an 80-something game season. I don't think it's going to be 100 or so. I think you're going to be around the 80s. I think it'll be around the 80s. And it's funny because let me let me make one last um <clears throat> I could see that occupy I could definitely see that. Let me make kind of one last political point and then um, I'm probably going to get ready to uh, jump off here. But um one of the one of the things that I guess bother me more than anything is how we have become uh, so one side to another side. I think the majority would agree with more than they believe they would if they had a conversation. I've probably talked with a good 50 plus people on, uh, on um, DM through Twitter who have I asked if they've had a different of opinion with me, they'll reach out to me through DM and, and we'll have a debate back and forth. And to be honest, there is some that we disagree with. But when I give them the facts, for an example, let's just say of what like what like Trump has done for the African-American community. So you look at criminal justice reform, which he started already with the First Step Act. You look at opportunity zones. You look at um, deregulation. You look at um, 
uh, historically black colleges, guaranteed to be funded no matter what. A lot of people don't even know this stuff has happened. And even when you tell them, they don't even believe it. There's a lot more work that needs to be done. There's no doubt about it. If people aren't willing to hear both sides and just hear it legitimately. Um, I think you got to hear both sides legitimately and listen and understand and just go from there. I don't think you can have it as a one size fits all because that's not the way the country works. This country is not a one size fits all country. So you got your extremely patriotic and you got your people who are a little upset with the way you've been treated and that's fair. But you got to have open dialogue and a discussion. You got to be willing to hear both sides. Um, why are the measures always half ways though? Um, because I don't think it's easy. And I think politics always gets involved. I think you got one side who goes, I don't want to hurt my base. And then you got the other side who says, I want to hurt my base. Here's another example. Joe Biden. Joe Biden is running for president. Joe Biden, to be fair, has a horrible track record with African Americans. And that's not me saying it because I dislike the guy. I really don't care about him. I think he's a terrible choice for Democrats, but I'll leave it at that. He has a horrible track record for, for African Americans. Horrible track record. That's just fact. Now, you got this new, real left, far left idea of defunding the police. Joe Biden wants no part of it. He don't want to answer the question. Because if he says, yes, I want to defund the police... You'll have the whole moderate Democrat Party side say, well, I don't like that idea. I don't know if I'm going to support. Maybe I'll sit out. But if he says, I don't like the idea, he's going to lose the liberals, which right now is making up a major part of that party. So that is where it gets tough. And that's the problem we have right now. Yeah, so see, you're a progressive populist. So, again, you like the idea of trade, fair trade. You like the idea of economic growth. That That's all correct, and I, I agree with you 100%. I say Biden was a terrible pick for Democrats because they proclaim themselves as the party of diversity and, 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 uh, 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 and unity. But then you get a guy with a horrible African-American track record. He goofs up so many times. It, it, to me, it's just not the best choice. And the people made the decision. I get that. But it's not a good look, I don't believe. Andrew Yang could have been good, smart, educated guy. Much better speaker than Joe Biden is. So, yeah, I, th I think that would have also been better than Biden. Biden's just a weird choice for where this party is right now. Um, and again, I think people are going to be surprised that he's, he's not going to get as much support as people believe. I, I don't think he don't see that. Oh, God, DJ Seals. Uh, what do you think about my last comment, by the way? Source running for president 2024 confirmed. I tell you what, if I had more money and if I had a legit way to get into politics, I think you need more voices like me. And and again, I'm not saying I'm going to run for president. Um, but my God, I do think you need more people that can really be down the middle and say, I get this and I get this. But we got to understand this is America. It's not a one size fits all. You got to see it in different aspects. You can't just see it for one people. You can't just see it for one idea. You got to see it for the overall uh, well-being of everybody. The Chinese and immigrant. Occupy 100%. Occupy, I gotta ask you. I don't want to put you on the spot. But I gotta ask you. I'm assuming you would probably vote third party. Because I don't really see you as... Even though your opinions, I think, would align more with Trump. To be fair, because of trade and the economy than it would Biden. But that'll be interesting to hear to hear what you're you know who you would actually uh, look to vote for. I think the Obama connection is why Biden got the nod. Yeah, probably. You're 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 probably spot on on that. I'll say something else that's a bit controversial. Um, oh God, no! Don't say I look like Rob Deerdrack. Oh God, please, DJ Steals. 
I'm about to take the hat off now. Oh my god. Um, but I, I actually don't believe Obama is as popular as people make him out to be. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Before anybody gets up in arms about me saying that, let me let me tell you why I don't think he's as popular as people really make him out to be. He really didn't help Hillary Clinton. And maybe it's just because she's just a horrible candidate. But he just had a little town hall online. It was supposed to be at 5 o'clock. I think a couple of people put it out there. But I don't remember even seeing it. Nothing made headlines. And I'm saying, Jesus, the former president talked and it didn't really make headlines anywhere? I didn't see people retweet it. I didn't see people share it. I didn't see the mainstream media even follow up with it much, which was very surprising to me. Um, For a guy who you are meant to believe is supposed to be so popular, um, I didn't really see that. I didn't really see that. Um... But I liked a lot of what Obama did. I, I disagree with a lot of it, but he was a great. He was a, he was a, a a a a good overall. If you like what is presidential, he kind of did that. Uh, it was nice to see that the class of twenty twenty graduate because they worked really hard. That is nice. That's good. Um, Occupy. I, I don't know if you want to answer me or not. Obama versus McCain 2008, who do you think would really win? Um, Obama. I, I think McCain's a horrible candidate. Um, I think I think McCain was just a terrible candidate. A horrible candidate. I'm fine with Trump on trade with China and the wall, but I can't vote on just two issues. Man, you shouldn't. And you shouldn't. Um, and you shouldn't at all. But, see, that's my thing. Um... A lot of these ideas are controversial because people make them controversial. Not because they are. If you believe that we shouldn't have legit immigration laws, a wall, and that's all racist, you just don't understand it. Minorities take a beating because of illegal immigration. That's just true. you got a lot of jobs that a lot of people can actually take that they can't because of this. Legal immigration is great. None of us can complain about legal immigration. Most of us have come from parents and families that had to come here legally in a sense. But I don't think these topics are as controversial as people want them to be. I just don't think they are. I, I really don't. People make these things always about what will strike the heart. Let me get the emotions out of you. We got to make it bad. We got to make it ugly. And let's no longer have a debate. Let's have a fight. That's the problem. That's the issue. We need to reduce immigration to H-1B-1 visas at this point. 40 million on a... This is coming from a guy who, who's not a huge Trump supporter, but you're, you're spot on. And this should not be a controversial topic. So that's where I think uh, politics really bothers me and where we have gotten away from worrying about... Americans, you know, when Trump came out with the first, the whole idea, and let's go back to baseball. We will, I promise. DJ Steals, I promise. Um, when Trump came out with the America First agenda, when everybody started, that's racist. I said to myself, what? We need to put our people first. We need to put minorities first. We need to fix inner cities. That's all America. We need to fix our infrastructure. We need to fix the way we do immigration. That is all America. America is for Americans. Exactly. All kinds of Americans. I think the problem is they want Trump to say for minorities, for black people, for this. When he just says, I want what's best for all Americans. And they make that sound bad like he's only talking about white people. It's not the case. Lowest, lowest African-American unemployment, lowest uh, uh, woman unemployment, lowest Asian unemployment. All that makes a lot of sense. Well, Whisper, let's, let's, um, let's be fair about that. 
Uh, let's be fair about that. And you're right, DJ Steele, he was wrong about that. I think everybody knew that wasn't really going to happen. But Whisper, let's be fair about that. Those countries that got the ban, they were listed under Obama's administration. So those weren't just countries that Trump handpicked and said, hey, I'm going to put a ban on these countries. That was already done for him by the previous administration. He carried that along. So again, did it work? I don't know if we would know. Maybe it didn't work. Maybe it did. Who knows? Who knows? Mexico is a good country. Why would he do that? Why would he build a wall? Just like many other countries build walls, it leaves yourself vulnerable to bad things happening. We have a horrible drug trafficking problem. We have a horrible human trafficking problem now that's, that's bigger than ever before. Am I just saying that is a Mexico issue? No. But a lot of that does take place at the southern border. That's, that's just facts. You do have to protect your borders. You, you do have to. And look, let me say this too. And then I am, I, I got to get off. I got I to gotta get about other things. One of my biggest problems, um, one of my biggest problems with illegal immigration that I've seen, and I, I refer this back to uh, inner cities. One of the biggest problems I see is that you got catch and release. So somebody who's in a, who's, who comes here illegally, which you already broke the law, you're already breaking the law at that moment, ends up getting caught with a DUI, for an example. They get let off. They get let off because they're not shit you can do about it. They give them a paper go, hey, I need you to show up in court this date. They're never going to show up in court. I don't blame them. But you may get a young kid in an inner city who is misguided, making the wrong choices in life. They get a first offense and are ending up doing five years or three years or four years. That's horrible. That's terrible. Stuff like that shouldn't happen in this country. There should be fairness among everybody. And we should understand that these type of policies truly do just help all Americans in general. With that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Thank you for the conversation. Thank you for um, everybody being fair and just having an open conversation. Um, I think it's awesome. And again, guys, thank you so much. I'll talk to you all again very, very soon. Thank you. We'll have another chat uh, probably in the next couple of days. Thank you.